grow the farm up. Look at this placement of seed and fertilizer. Biology. Getting a great cut. Well, look at you can see the actual moisture coming out of this stuff. Coming out of these hoses. Look at that. I mean, I'm drying about 20 gallon an acre. Most, most of it's water. Keeping the planter pretty clean. I'm putting on Leonardite, Humasaurus, liquidized. I mean, I'm gonna keep it in suspension, so I'm running off a squeeze pump. If you haven't seen the previous video, I had to have the squeeze pump made. It just goes in a circle and sque literally squeezes the hoses, grinds itself, and it's really good that there's no orifices it doesn't plug up, which this bio, this Humasaur stuff will just plug your filters on conventional systems. I mean, that's just good. Let's go, let's go see, we're, we're wondering, uh, how are we planting? Well, let's take a look. I get my knife here with one hand. Okay. okay, so there, there's a seed right there. We just found it. Hopefully you can see that. Here, let me try this. See it, see if this works. Right at about two knuckles. There you go, I don't know, we'll see right at about two knuckles deep. I don't know if you can see that or not. And this is on an area right on top. Basically, look, the Truvies were splitting an old rye row. So this rye was drilled in a seven and a half inch spacing last fall, fall of 2024, early October. I just wanted to show that. Figured that might be worth putting up. Uh, you know, we fabricated this system ourselves, and actually, a couple people call me about them because uh, they saw the video. So, we're thinking about building a few of them. Comment if you're interested at all. It's been a pretty fail safe, foolproof system, and you're able to apply freaking Swiss cheese if you want. Well, anyway. Alright, copyright strike. Let's see. 13 days. No, that's not a bad movie, actually. It's a, it's a good old movie. Like in Hollywood's uh, heyday, back when they made good movies, right? Okay. Let's go plant. Sometimes I like to just put a movie on in the background. It's kind of like an audio book, a movie that you've seen a bunch of times. So you just kind of go on the journey while they're talking, but you're kind of in and out because you're paying attention to other things. You know like the radio and the car, the age-old question. So many options today to listen to. Look at that. I mean, I, I've got root structure down to three feet deep, and we're setting up for a huge drought. Coming in with the crimper behind this, I'll get some videos of that out basically as quick as I can get to the videos. We've got quite a bit crimped. 
and laid down and corn emerging. Looks really good. I need to get over there and get some video of that for you guys. All right, get back to it here. Here, you wanna just take one more look. What do you think, John? I don't know. I'm, I'm laying that mulch down. I'm here in the arid west. We literally have not got any moisture. Guys are running pivots all over the place. The pivot across the road over there is running. The pivot to the north of me is running. I mean, everybody's already fired up and running. And where they did strip till, they're planting into dust. Whereas I've actually got a little bit, look at my tracks. There is actually some surface moisture. Some, I mean, see, I'm some, not much. Not much, it is. Uh, 99 degrees out, that's probably not right, but I bet it's 93, 94, so we're booking along. I do like to go real slow in this stuff, just because why not? You only get to paint once. I mean, I do all kinds of things to try to make it rain, so I figured, eh, just like wait until the 10th of May we'll make sure you got some corn you a couple of field or so left to go so hopefully it starts raining and it rains you out until like July I mean, or June you know that'd be I'd almost take that that's how dry we are so I think what's gonna happen I'm gonna be able to lay this mulch over and then uh, for the first 50 days of the corn crops life 60 70 whatever it is uh, before it hits full canopy that sunlight comes through and hits bare soil it just bakes moisture out of the top few inches I mean and and then some especially if you tilled and I plant I tilled some I just shoot I disked like 450 acres of corn stubble last fall so I'm not a uh, evangelist or anything I'm just trying to lay this mulch over and then the first five inches of moisture that I apply with the pivot will actually go into the soil and into the profile rather than basically just getting the top fourth of an inch wet for a day or two and then spinning the pivot around again and I mean that's that's where we're at it's gonna be these these roots are gonna have to go deep to find more they're gonna try I don't know that we'll be able to keep up irrigating that's, I think, uh, everybody talks about the drought monitor and how it doesn't look that bad. Well, they're comparing it to last year and 2023. Okay, those were the two driest years in, like, freaking history west of, uh, west of the uh, Missouri River, for sure. No, I'm only about an hour west, but that's, it's kind of a good dividing line, I guess, if you want to use one. West of the Missouri River in southeast Nebraska, there's huge seed corn production facilities, huge ethanol plants, it's highly irrigated cropland that I don't want to say guarantees anything to Mother Nature. Man, I'm a farmer, you know. Only only amateurs use words like guarantee. <laughs> uh, uh, everything could change your plan in a heartbeat. It's all about the maximum retention of moisture then. So I'm putting some liquid on in, in the furrow. And I tell you what, it's germinating the seeds. I'm not having to water my corn up. Like I said, I'm gonna have to go get some videos of that. I did not have to water it up and, and it all came up very even and very well spaced. It, it's really pretty remarkable. And then we crimped it when it was at like spike or like not even maybe a short leaf and it, it, it doesn't hurt that corn any I've been planting seed corn my whole life and we, we plant we plant rows of mail into already standing rows of mail all the time and what I learned is you can't screw up more than about 15% I mean so you know no matter what you're doing what once a planter lays the seed row down you're gonna see it all year unless you spray it it's just this cover cropping thing, you just got to be willing to have your fields kind of look like shit compared to your neighbors for the first few uh, 
the first month and a half. His ears look all nice and even, see? I mean, look, you know, his corn's all nice and even, too. Coming up, you know. Uh, this, these corn plants can survive until they get to be three foot tall on very little moisture. But that, when it comes to setting the ear time, I, you know, I, I think people in the board of trade, and I think really the global supplies ought to show that. We, we have like a 20 year low in ending stocks. So I, I think uh, wait on this summer, guys. And, you know, they're saying the drought monitor is slightly better, well, than last year and the year before. Sure, you're t I mean, we're, we are in a drought cycle. Okay. And it's go it's going to become one of the major issues and stories of the summer. If you've stuck around this long on the video, then this is the tidbit of information that you get. Get ready. Uh, you guys have seen some rains in the east, so that that is kind of tamped down. The but you know still. Even in the east, they're so far behind that to actually fill that profile is... And it seems like every year they have a, a situation comes up to where they might get good weather and then there's always that last 10, uh, you know, or last, uh, last month, month and a half, they get no rain and knocks 30 bushels off their yield. I mean, that's they don't have pivots out there. That's why there's so much seed corn production here. Because you can just irrigate. As much as I hate to say it, I'm, I'm already tired of irrigating. I've got pivots running. It's absolutely remarkable. I, I don't know. They, they talk about uh, the, the, the plow chases away the rain, you know. There used to be an old uh, wise tale that... Uh, you know, rain follows the plow. That might have been true for like the first 10 years we plowed, if you think about it. it. Probably was. Or maybe something to it. I bet you released enough good, you know, carbons and stuff into the immediate atmosphere that I mean, maybe maybe it did. If everybody did it at the same time, you, I, I could see it doing that. But eventually, over time, that, you know, it's that repetitive process. That's why it's all about... Uh, rotations and getting different species growing and just getting good healthy roots underneath you already growing and then throw a seed into it and you'll be remarkably amazed this crimper looks good I'm gonna uh, get some video of that and put it out and let me know in your area even if you've gotten rain even if you're rained out and that's why you're watching this video let me know How's your subsoil? Do you actually have enough moisture to grow 200, 250 bushel corn if Mother Nature gives us a chance and doesn't knock it all over? Which also tends to happen a heck of a lot more the last few years. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, I mean, it's been catastrophic, disastrous. And you can't get backyarditis, you know. I think the trade looks at the whole market, but I don't think I, right now I tell you what I'm 85 to 95 percent sure they are miscalculating their hedged bets on the amount of crop that America is capable of growing they've pretty much decided that oh these seed varieties are so good now it doesn't matter what happens we're going to get 170 bushels an acre average across the United States and it's just not true you're going into the third year of a mega drought cycle uh, yeah, depleted and you know what did this rye use some of my moisture absolutely probably a couple of inches but but now I can use it to help me more efficiently put down the next four inches five inches I'll actually get to use that and that is the the theory and the strategy with cut with the cover crops even in, in irrigated country, I get, the only good thing about it is you can control when your crop gets rain, but there's also a lot of studies. I went and saw Dr. John Ward. He was talking about uh, how, you know, there's a lot of calcium in uh, 
irrigation water and so if you just put like five revs of your pivot on you'll see your actual your soil profile will change because of all the calcium you've just thrown on top and and leached through you know it, it's a there's so much about this soil that we don't even know that we don't know. That's why I figured I'd just gonna document the journey. Grow the farm up.